During World War II, soldiers in Europe, North Africa and the Pacific faced a constant challenge, staying dry and protected in unpredictable weather. Rain, mud and humidity could render tents and gear useless and standard issue materials often failed under prolonged exposure. Yet, among the equipment issued and sometimes improvised in field units was a type of shelter cloth that has been largely forgotten. Unlike early plastic sheeting, which was prone to tearing and stiffening in cold, this cloth remained flexible, highly water-resistant and surprisingly durable under repeated use. It became an essential tool for soldiers constructing temporary shelters, protecting supplies and even improvising rain gear. Understanding this material reveals not just a historical footnote, but practical lessons for modern survivalists and anyone interested in effective, low-tech shelter solutions. The core of the shelter cloth's effectiveness lay in its material composition and weave. Unlike tarpaulins or early synthetic sheets, the World War II shelter cloth combined tightly woven cotton or linen fibres with a water-repellent coating, often oil or wax-based. This treatment created a surface that resisted moisture while remaining breathable, preventing condensation from building up underneath. The weave itself allowed for strength and flexibility, enabling the cloth to bend over frames, drape over supplies or form protective coverings without tearing. Soldiers quickly learned that a properly stretched piece of shelter cloth could cover a larger area than a standard tent and could be anchored in irregular terrain where tents would collapse. For modern application, using tightly woven fabrics with wax or oil treatment can replicate this effect, providing a durable, water-resistant layer far superior to early plastic sheeting. The versatility of this cloth made it indispensable in varied field conditions. Field reports and veteran accounts describe soldiers using the cloth to construct A-frame shelters, lean-tos and simple ground sheets. Unlike heavy tents, it could be deployed in minutes, anchored with sticks ropes or tent pegs and rearranged to suit changing terrain or weather. The lightweight nature of the material also meant that a single soldier could carry enough to create shelter for a small team or cover essential equipment. Modern survivalists can apply the same principle by carrying a multi-purpose tarp or waxed canvas. Using a central ridge line or creating a sloped lean-to can maximize water runoff, just as World War II soldiers did demonstrating that simple geometry combined with the right material can outperform bulkier solutions. The cloth's durability under extreme conditions really set it apart from plastic alternatives. Plastic sheeting, especially those early versions, became brittle in the cold, tore easily in the wind and offered almost no abrasion resistance. The World War II shelter cloth, on the other hand, maintained its integrity in freezing rain, snow and even desert winds. Soldiers learned to repair minor tears with a simple needle and thread, and even when heavily used, the material remained serviceable for weeks or months. For modern users, selecting canvas or wax cotton offers, well, the same advantage. A flexible, repairable shelter that survives repeated exposure, harsh terrain and extended campaigns.
This is particularly useful for off-grid survivalists or long-term camping scenarios where synthetic sheeting would, frankly, fail. The design of shelters using this cloth relied on physics rather than sheer coverage. Soldiers understood that water resistance alone was insufficient. Proper tension, slope and anchoring were essential. Leaning the cloth over a central ridge, anchoring the edges into the ground and allowing excess to overhang or form gutters ensured that rainwater ran clear of the interior. Veteran instructions emphasized continuous airflow to reduce condensation, often by leaving slight gaps at the apex or along the sides, which prevented moisture accumulation despite heavy rain. These techniques are directly applicable today. Even a small patch of wax canvas or treated cotton, when it's correctly oriented and stretched over poles or branches, will create a dry, ventilated space far more efficiently than, say, a cheap plastic sheet. This shelter cloth also proved invaluable for supply and equipment protection. Critical resources, you know, could be shielded from the elements with this simple yet effective material. Beyond creating temporary sleeping areas, soldiers draped the cloth over ammunition rations and field kitchens. Its resistance to tearing and ability to maintain shape under wind and rain meant that critical resources could remain dry and functional. For modern off-grid or emergency preparedness scenarios, treating a heavy-duty canvas top or cotton sheet with wax, oil or silicone spray can, you know, protect supplies while offering the added bonus of being multi-purpose. It's usable as ground cover, emergency shelter or even rain gear in a pinch. The cloth demonstrates a principle often overlooked in modern survival planning. You know, durability, adaptability and repairability often outweigh convenience or that initial waterproofing you get in synthetic materials. World War II soldiers carried and maintained these cloths in some really challenging environments, precisely because the material could be repaired repositioned and reused. Modern campers, homesteaders and survivalists, well, they can definitely learn from this. Investing in high-quality maintainable materials is simply more reliable than depending on cheap disposable plastic. If you want more historical survival solutions and forgotten fieldcraft that still work today, do subscribe to In the Beginning and share this video. Techniques like the World War II shelter cloth aren't just relics. They are proven tools for staying safe, dry and ready in any environment.